when I happened upon her, she was older, wiser, and certainly more experienced. Her beauty was deep, rich, and a bit mystical. Her, her scent was magical. For the last decade, each day, I have fallen more in love, become more obsessed, and more passionate about her. Here she is when we first met. Not much to look at. As I said, her beauty was perhaps a bit mystical. A medieval village lost in time called Castiglioncello in southern Tuscany, first inhabited 30,000 years ago by a Neolithic man whose cave drawings can still be seen on Mount Chitona, which is viewed uh, from the village that I fell in love with uh, on the photograph there. After Neolithic man, the village was inhabited by the Etruscans. The Etruscans were this amazing civilization that occupied the center, center part of Italy from about 1500 till about 200 BCE and left behind these incredible pieces of art and music and, and uh, uh, philosophy uh, in and around uh, this place called Castiglioncello, uh, literally tombs of the Etruscans uh, within walking distance. Later, in about the 14th century, Castiglioncello became inhabited by the Sienese, who walled the city, fortified it, and really set down this stake in uh, territory controlled by its arch rival, of course, Florence. Those who saw her a decade ago in ruins, much as you've just seen her, thought I was crazy. But I loved her. And those closest to me were not only frightened, but really thought uh, I should perhaps be committed, uh, or at least referred to AA for being under the influence of too much Italian wine. But I loved her. My family kept pointing out all the obstacles to this love affair. First of all, I spoke Italian about at the level of a two-year-old. <laughs> Second, this village was abandoned by the Italians themselves decades earlier. And third, no bank or lender would ever touch this kind of uh, project. So there were these formidable obstacles, but I was passionate about her. Looking at the ruins you saw a, a few minutes ago, I saw this sanctuary, this place that could be built to foster a reconnection between the great artistic and humanistic society of the Italian Renaissance. A place could be created in this abandoned village, I thought, that could be a little bit of a haven where people who were intellectually curious could come, engage one another, engage the great thinking uh, of the Renaissance, uh, the Renaissance, of course, bringing forth a new birth of ancient philosophy, could, could engage contemporary arts and artisans, uh, all in this place of great serenity that engaged mankind for nearly 30,000 years. For a decade, I kept this commitment, and I faithfully restored her stone by stone, building by building, garden by garden. This is what she looks like today. This building on the left, of course, was transformed, or, or this 
room transformed into this kitchen. Uh, this bedroom now uh, uh, converted from this uh, pile of stone. Inside that door is this, uh, what we call the library, where people truly have come and sat around and explored that great humanistic question, what is it that connects us as human beings? Is it art? Is it philosophy? What is this bond between us all? Because we know it exists in our hearts. And that exploration takes place in, in this room and elsewhere throughout the village. Uh, this is uh, a young woman walking through the village, and you can see how it maintained its medieval, sort of lost in time character, uh, uh, in including the drainage system and the curbing uh, from the Middle Ages. A little bit farther, uh, about 50 kilometers, or excuse me, 50 meters from where she is, is, is this panoramic view inside the village of a, a terrace cafe uh, and um, a pergola and, and a building. As you see here now, this beauty I saw uh, a decade ago has now been revealed for everyone. And indeed, people now have come and not only seen this beauty, but engaged in this endeavor of finding the connection between all of, all of us as human beings. I've named her Monteverdi, uh, after the great composer, of course, and, and the father of, of the opera, the creator of the opera, but also as a pun, meaning Green Mountain, and, and this, as you can see, sits not only on a green mountain itself, but also surrounded by uh, Green Mountain. And every year, Monteverdi invites people to come and really walk, literally almost, in the footsteps of Da Vinci, Galileo, Michelangelo, the Medici, who have uh, a hunting lodge they built just a few kilometers from Monteverdi, and of course, Claudio Monteverdi. Every year, from May through September, Monteverdi invites contemporary artists, filmmakers, poets, philosophers, writers to come and live in residence and engage with the guests uh, at Monteverdi in this exploration of the great humanism and art and culture of the Renaissance, again, trying to find what it is from the Neolithic man, to the Etruscans, the ancient Greeks, to contemporary times, what it is that connects us all. How did this transformation happen? What caused it? How did we go literally from a ruined, abandoned village to what you've just seen on the slides? Passion. Not mine alone, by no means mine alone. Because really, as human beings, there's nothing we accomplish alone. Nothing we can build alone. Anything that's worth looking at in our human society is something we build collaborative, collaboratively with other people. Certainly things that are beautiful and majestic and stand the test of time. A good example of this, a classic example perhaps, is the Sistine Chapel. Contrary to popular belief, Michelangelo did not paint this alone. What he did is bring into the project great painters from the Renaissance like Luca Cinarelli, who just happened to paint this incredible fresco of the apocalypse about five years earlier, five years before this one, uh, in the uh, Duomo of Orvieto. Orvieto just happens to be about 30 kilometers from Monteverdi. Now, Michelangelo, Cinarelli, were both Italians. Yet, they collaborated with great passion. 
But to collaborate across cultures takes something special. It really takes this formidable diplomatic tool that I call the shared lover. This sharing begins openly, lovingly, with great humility, great vulnerability, by saying, I'm not of your land, I'm not of your country, I'm not of your people, but I love them, and I love you. And I want to commit my time and my resources and my energy to restoring this beauty that I see in your land and in your people and your culture. I want to preserve it. I want to protect it. I want to help you build it. If all of that sounds a little bit like a courtship or an invitation to marriage, you get the idea of the kind of ardor that it takes to build something across cultures. Because, you see, passion is palpable. People can see it. They can feel it. They can touch it. Stonemasons, laborers in a quarry in Carrera, Italian engineers, electricians, architects, designers, artisans, truck drivers felt my passion. They made it their own. We shared it. We shared this lover. Ultimately, Monteverdi, what you've seen, what you've seen earlier, and there it is on the hillside, ultimately Monteverdi is the result of this collaboration, this sharing of love and of passion. It's an act of passion. And what this act of passion did is create, truly, as you can see in the photograph, a shining village on a hill. A place where people of all faiths, but most importantly, people of good faith, can come and celebrate human exceptionalism. Thanks.